morning, everyone. My name is Ane Agostini, CEO of CID Insurance Programs, and I'm going to be your instructor today for the secrets to a successful commercial book of business. Uh, and um, I appreciate all of you joining us today. So let's get started. Same old logistics. Many of you have attended many webinars and some of ours before. Uh, you'll be on mute um, and not able to speak, but you can definitely hear me, hopefully. And uh, But your voice is really important, so please use the chat room to ask questions throughout the webinar. Totally will stop what I'm doing and answer the questions for you. Um, and we've got, we want your feedback as well. Um, so there will be a short survey that will pop up after the webinar, and we'd really like you to complete it so we, we know how we're doing and how we can serve you better. So what are we going to talk about today? What are we going to learn? I mean, um, this is, and now more than ever, managing, you know, your, your agency, managing, and especially your commercial book uh, of business is going to be very important so that we're going to better understand that. I'm going to delve into that and show you some systems that can really be helpful. Uh, and then what are the secrets? Those are some of the systems I'm going to talk about, things that you wouldn't, you know, that are really, that make perfect sense, but you're not necessarily practicing them. And then how do you manage commercial renewals and new business efficiently? So I'll give you some secrets to that as well. So let's get going. Okay, first things first, COVID-19. So I just, you know, we're going into this. I wanted to lay some foundation because before we can talk about you managing your agency, you know, there's a lot of, a little bit of chaos going on. You know, um, people are panicking a bit because, and, and understandably so, because um, the, the shutdown has caused a lot of businesses to not be able to have to lay off their employees and to actually close their doors. And it, you know, and the, the time frame of this, so there's a lot of people panicking. So we are working with our carriers to make sure, and the insurance commissioner just um, put out a bulletin yesterday morning saying that, and this is in California, so I, I assume every state's going to be doing something similar. You know that they're they're um, they're sort of ordering 60 days April and May of premium payment flexibility. But most of the carriers had already started to do that, where you know they were if they couldn't pay their premium, they were going to they were going to sort of freeze the accounts and give them some flexibility. So please know that there are solutions. Um, I'm going to be sending out um, a, an email broadcast that sort of give you some ideas that will be helpful in different types of coverages, uh, uh, how to help your insurers understand to not let go, not to cancel their policies, but to look for ways to sort of freeze the policy because once they start adding the employees back, that's where they're really going to need those coverages in place. And canceling them is going to make it more difficult to actually get insurance later. So just a few words to be said there. Uh, and then make sure you're reaching out to your underwriters to see what flexibility they, they can offer. Uh, and then, the, as I said, avoiding the cancellation will make it a lot easier once they start back up the business. And again, ask me any questions that you have relative to this. But um, and, and going forward, this is really going to be now is the time, you know, uh, is, is to really look at your agency and place focus because this is going to be a time, you know, that you you need to really analyze your business and take a look at um, how how you will survive and and flourish during this this you know pandemic uh, you know effect on the economy, uh, and that is yet to be that is yet to be seen how that impact is take place right now. We're doing our, our new business and our renewals uh, as a wholesaler. We're doing we're doing um, things you know are fair, fairly stable, and so we're just you know sort of watching and waiting and being as careful as we can uh, to see what's going to come. Obviously, uh, as agencies, we're in the rears. Our income and revenue source is in the rears, 
So, you know, what we're doing today happened 60 to 90 days ago. So that's why, you know, making sure that you're bringing in, you're working new business, because new business is still, you, I mean, this, you should be doing business as normal and working hard to hang on to your renewals. So let's get started. The balance of that. As an agency, you, you've, got your, um, you've got your commercial lines, your personal lines, and your life. So are you top heavy in any one area? A lot of times agencies we start out in personal lines and they end up being top heavy there, and then they struggle to actually build a commercial book. Personal lines is really service oriented, so um, and and then life goes along with that personal lines. Um, but the important thing, what we're talking about today, is building that commercial book, which really needs to balance out, uh, and usually is the hardest coverage because there's so many different types of coverages, and there's so many different types of businesses, and so it you know you have to learn how um, to sell the right coverages for all the different businesses you will come across. Um, we're here to help you with that. So our underwriters um, are, are skilled at that. So you can, you, you can rely on our help in carrying you down that road as you build your commercial book. So um, commercial insurance, we, you, as I mentioned, you know, you've got every type of business, what a garage, is going to be um, needing for coverage is going to be completely different than a, an attorney or a consultant um, or even a contractor. You know, and contractors is becoming so much more sophisticated. They they need E and O, they need pollution liability, they need all these coverage. It's not just contractors' liability anymore. So really, um, uh, you know, rely on your our underwriters to help you. Um, figure out what coverages you do need. And then how do you professionally uh, propose uh, commercial insurance to your clients? Are you, so commercial insurance is different. Personal lines is heavy service, a lot of emotion involved, and, um, and commercial is by far a lot less service orientation. Generally speaking, you, unless it's a contractor, you will hear from them um, except for one, once when you reach out to them and make a presentation once a year. And that becomes the most important thing, is to professionally propose commercial insurance to your clients. And you want to make sure that you're balancing out the new business and renewals. Uh, it can be a challenge because people tend to, you know, tend to drive towards service and not <laughs> more so because it, it, it's the squeaky wheel that's, that's forcing, you know, grabbing your attention, and you really do need um, to focus on your renewals and your new business and um, uh, in, the, in the midst of that. It has to be a balancing act. Okay, so let's talk about this is what should drive your agency. Just a simple equation. You can, you can change the words. You can, you know, make one yourself, but this is just a basic basic sales equation, and it, sales equation can be used for um, new business and for renewals because all parts of the equation have to be worked. So X date, X date is, so, um, is the presentation, uh, I mean, excuse me, plus the presentation plus the close is going to equal the bind order, which is where the dollars are. And so on new business, a next date would be that you're gathering X dates for new business that you would like to propose insurance for. Uh, for renewals, you're going to be running an expiration list that you're going to be managing your renewals from by expiration date. So those things become important. I'm going to go into a little detail about each one of these as we go, but this sales equation, you have to work every part of it in order to get your binds, make sure that you're you're, bind, you're, you're binding your renewals and you're binding your new business. Because if you miss parts of it, you leave parts undone, you're, you're never going to, you're never going to close the sale. So let's talk about that, X dating. I mentioned new business and renewals. So ideally, 
when you're working, and you have to have focus on new business. I know it's so easy to just have everything else get in the way, but you have to focus on new business. If you are only focusing on renewals and service, your agency will shrink. And because you will lose business no, no matter what, you not all policies will renew. And um, and service will, you can service forever. And, and not really, uh, that's not going to, I mean, you want to give good service, that's part of the process, but, but, but renewing your policies, retaining your business, and getting new business are really where the focus needs to be. What are your weekly sales goals? You know, are, are you, do you have a plan to put it forth? It doesn't have to be overwhelming. It just, you need to make some simple, set some simple goals um, to, and make an attempt every day. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big portion of the day, but a little attempt every day. I mean, referrals can work really great. Um, and um, I, that's, I mean, a lot of our business comes from referrals because we do a good job um, with, with our brokers. So um, you can make contact with business owners, and then you can develop and manage profiles by a 10-week marketing schedule. So that's an interesting thing. You've got to track this somehow. So you've got to build a profile on those that you're really, you want their business. So you have 12 months out of the year. Like how many X dates can you gather so that you can work them going forward um, with different um, different businesses? That's, that is where, um, that that's a great organizational tool. And you need to have enough information on each of those risks, which I think I will, um, We'll talk about a little bit more as we go along. Now, renewal profiling. You want to review each renewal to ensure adequate coverage. That's one of the things that a lot um, of you can get really caught on is that you just renew the policy and you never take a look to see what is their exposure and what coverages do they need. And are you offering those? At least saying that we recommend that you um, get a quote or a, a proposal on this and consider this coverage for your business. So that's a really important. And then entertain placement with other carriers. Um, you don't keep renewing with the same carrier when you may have other carriers that can uh, either are going to be more competitive or provide broader coverage. Um, and, you know, again, blocking the market um, from your competition is always important. So that's another really important item when you're working on a, an X day um, renewal. Uh, and then make contact with your insured. If you are not making contact with your insured, you will most likely fail. At, at, you, you will far, have far less renewals that, will, will, that you will retain. And again, if you have questions, please um, put them in. Um, so now let's talk about the pr presentation. You're, you've gathered this information, you want to go get a proposal um, or a quote from the carrier so you can propose it to your insured. And one of the things is getting your underwriter to say yes. So that's the difference between, you know, um, a so someone who can see gray, a good underwriter can see gray. And and then if you're you've got to work on being able to tell a story in a way that lets that underwriter know if it if it you know it may not meet the guidelines exactly, but you've got a good storyline. Maybe there's a claim, you know, and you you can explain to the underwriter why it makes sense to write the business, and then you want documentation to support it. Uh, but there that happens all the time where you. You know, if you've got good reasoning, then an underwriter um, will say yes rather than no. And so you have to know your risk profile in order to do that. So now you're going to make the presentation to the, the prospect. And again, you, you should be doing this with renewals and new business. Um, I, I, this is sort of I, humorous, but. The one thing to take away from this slide is that there is no one way. You can't make 
the same presentation to every business owner. You've got the Rambo, who's aggressive and assertive, and you're going to probably have to give him three proposals um, and just sit back and let him make, you know, he'll, he'll make a decision. And then you've got some that are analytical, like Anderson Cooper, and they're going to question everything. It's, um, they, they don't want to be pressured, you know, um, you, you're probably going to have to, um, you, you're probably going to need some time to think, they're going to need some time to think about it. You give them two proposals, you know, and make a return appointment because they're going to need to think about it and analyze it. And then Jimmy Fallon, indecisive, wants your opinion, not sure, um, you know, and, but they are generally ready to move past the decision. So if he trusts you, so that their that personality is working on a higher tr trust level, uh, and they'll go with your recommendation. So one proposal, possibly two, will work in that case. And then um, Kim Kardashian is the latest and the greatest. She's very trendy, and um, that if she has the mentality that if everyone else is buying it, then so should she. So it's sort of like keeping up with the Joneses, um, and you would you would dress accordingly, you know, right? Make the presentation, you know, um, very very um, elegant or trendy, and then don't push the sale coach in, be your friend. So that's just, uh, and all this is to remind you is to to really listen and pay attention to the business owner that you're going to be working with to sell insurance to, because you want it. You're going to go out there and do it. You want to be successful at it. You want to achieve the sale. Okay? A little bit more about presentation. Okay? You want to prepare a professionally laid out proposal. Don't use the quotes we sent you. That's not going to help you. And by the way, on our website, we have proposal templates that are Word documents, and we think the areas where you – you know, it, it's sort of like a template. These are the areas you need to fill out with the specific, and, and we've done them by coverage um, and a few of them by class of business so that it makes it a little bit easier. If you don't see what you need, please email me and let me know, uh, and we'll, we'll create one for you. Uh, we use these in our office as well because that's how we function. It just makes the process so much easier. You're not, you know, building something from scratch over and over again. So um, these are the things that you want to make sure that you've been disclosed as broker fees, state taxes, inspection charges. If there's an audit to the policy, I'm, you know, you need to put on whether that policy is audited or not um, on their proposal because that's, you can get caught on that and they're going to be really angry if they didn't understand that they were going to be audited and might they might be owed they may owe, a, you know, additional premium. And then exclusions. I'm a big proponent of putting exclusions on the policy because insurers will think you're they're insured for everything. So the exclusions have to be disclosed. And then, um, and then you've got make sure that you're paying attention to those bind only sub, subject to conditions. So what 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 are the the binding subjectivities? And then. Our proposal templates always include an invoice, and then put the premium finance options out there, because you, we all know that what a pain it is is when you don't get the premium financing done, you know, uh, at at the, the time that you're binding the coverage, and then make sure that you are aware of the, the signatures that need to be uh, acquired. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the close. And, and a lot of people miss this part. They just put the quote out there, and then they they don't really follow up. They just keep waiting for, you know, the person to come back to them and tell them they're going to take it um, or buying the coverage. So the close is the follow-up. Make an appointment with the client to present and close it. I mean, in-person is ideal. People appreciate that. It is, this is a, we're in the relationship business, so make sure that you're creating relationships because that's how you're going to keep the business long term. Be sure to address the coverage benefits versus the premium um, because that, you know, certainly people are going to be highly sensitive to paying a higher premium, especially now, but 
you do want to point out is maybe you're, you know, maybe you're apples to apples, but do you offer more coverage? And that's what you, you the communication of that and how it, how it, it will benefit the insured is what's important. Know your value added propositions. What do you offer as the uh, insurance broker uh, to that business owner? And then ask for the business. Don't be afraid to ask for the business. And, and close, obtain the signatures and payment uh, in order to bind the policy. Okay, securing the bind. So that, this is, we were just talking about that. This is just a little bit more. So you, you do have to pay attention to those details because it gets, it could get you in trouble and it really um, makes it hard for us to be able to not, we can't help you achieve what you need if we, if we do not get all the subject to buying conditions met at the time you are coming to us to buy. Uh, and then, um, and then you want to secure the buying with the underwriter, making sure that you've got the application, the loss rooms, anything that's required, the signed terrorism form, state required documents for non-admitted business process the finance agreement, as I mentioned before, and then tend to ensure that the policy is issued and paid. What do I mean by that? This is, if you're not running your agency on issued and paid, you are, um, you are setting yourself up for failure. You're like, you're, you're, you're running your agency as if you don't know um, whether you're having success or not. So issued means, okay, you bound the policy. Did you get the policy issued? Guess what? You know, especially on direct bill, when the policy gets issued, that's telling you that um, you're going to get your commission. So, and the next part of it is, once the policy is issued, did you get paid by the carrier, or maybe you, maybe it was agency bill and you netted out your commission. So you already have those. You're waiting for the policy to be issued. So those are the two things that drive, you know, um, revenue. You know, have you have you succeeded in renewing your renewals, and then um, making sure that you're in a business? Oops, excuse me, everyone. Okay. Uh, didn't I didn't turn off my own phone, but I but I didn't tell you guys. You guys don't have to. So, anyways, that um, and then process of uh, the last thing is to forward proof to your new client and thank them for their business. And that's the best time to ask for a referral is when they're happy with you and you, they're feeling like you're doing a great job for them. Here's another little secret and that many of you probably are not even paying any attention to. We track our production. Um, and we used to, many years ago, track it by um, the month. And we, we suddenly started figuring out that we, by the time you're done with a month, you're figuring this out. You're two weeks into the next month by the time you get all your data put together. So we we recommend, and we're very successful um, as a result of tracking weekly. So we we track we do track our renewals monthly, um, but we track our new business weekly. So I so that may um, may make sense to you. So and um, so the monthly is by an expiration date, and we actually that works really well. There, so so you, you know, one one and you know or you, you go forward from there. February is two one, and then you go to the end of the month, and you're constantly working three or four months at a time. So you, and a lot of our we either do it depending on the underwriter they, they'll they'll manage it electronically on a on a, a expiration report. Or they'll manage it, um, uh, at the printed out copy, and they color code um, the the, the uh, insureds as they go through the month. So that's why. So because we do a 60 day, 30 day, 10 day process, we start 60 days out gathering information. Um, we propose at 30 days, and then we send a reminder at 10. So just those are ideas that you could. It works beautifully with your insureds, the same as we work with our brokers. Now, new business, we track weekly because we it, it gets it, you get too far 
along to figure out, well, I'm, I'm not having the success I need. You need to be able to look at weekly and see how are we doing weekly. So track your new business weekly. And again, let me know if you have any questions. By the way, Outlook, uh, you can set it up to show the weeks. So you, you, you can track and see how you're doing right out of your Outlook. And then let's talk about managing your commercial book from new business. As I mentioned earlier, have a marketing strategy. Manage your commercial profiles. Develop those. Follow the sales equation, right? Because you have to work all parts of it. And then set weekly goals for premium and PIF growth, policy and force growth. So you need to be growing your commercial book in PIF so that what you're losing out the back end on renewals and gaining with new business, that you're going to have PIF growth, policies enforced growth, and in addition, you should have premium growth when the two of those meet, uh, it, when you look at the total, you look at your total commercial book. And then increase your fee income with broker fees and premium finance, premium financing. There's um, opportunity there to um, to earn more on a policy. Everybody knows that an agency needs about 13.5 percent to to stay profitable. You know, and 15 would be beautiful, um, but not always easily obtainable. So, but. That's, you know, and we charge low brokerage fees in order to allow you to be able to uh, charge them yourself. And then you can develop relationships with your premium financing uh, company, and they, they will pay you uh, a certain percentage on the premium finance. You know, talk with your premium finance company to find out more about that. Okay. And then managing your commercial book for renewals. Treat every renewal like new business. That's what's important. You know, that may be the only time that they're going to be able to feel like you're there taking care of them because a lot of commercial policies don't require a lot of attention. But don't don't go to sleep on it because there's always the competition that's walking in trying to get that X date themselves and take it away from you. Manage by a report, as I said. And, and you have to be managing multiple months at a time because you're, you're working forward and backwards, right? Because you're going to work out 60 days, but at the same time, you're, you're working the current month trying to make sure that all those policies renew. So it's about 90 days worth of, you know, uh, that you end up managing. So know your retention and lapse ratios. How are you, are you retaining your, business? Are you retaining 85%, 90%? Certainly, ideally, you want to be no less, no less than 85%, ideally 90 to 95%. And then manage policy audits because policy audits are where you can get yourself a policy canceled, not renewed, problems with the insured where they don't want to renew with you. So that, that's super important. And then again, at the, when you're renewing business, ask for referrals. Ask for, you know, another insured, someone in the area, uh, someone they, they know that could use your services. And then let's talk about service, which is should not be, it's always you want to deliver good service. But that's, for me, that's all about attitude. And the one thing when you are hiring people in your office, you want to duplicate yourself. So all all employees need to be part of the sales equation. Don't hire them to do data input. Don't hire them just to answer the phone. Don't hire them to just do service. You want to make sure that they understand the you know the goal of the agency, and that they are owning it and part of it. They're going to ask for referrals. Work smart. Use forms and templates. We have a lot of them on our website that, that um, I, I, I encourage you to go look under resources and, um, and, and use, make them your own. And then time management sheets can be very valuable when you're, um, when, for employees to make sure that you're managing your time or maybe even yourself uh, if you're trying to juggle that new business renewals and service. 
making sure that you're spending enough time balancing that out. Use good judgment and, and, and problem solving because that, uh, uh, that's, that's the key. That it really is the key to keeping an insured is being able to problem solve a situation and not keep your head. And then prevent cancellations. Implement a payment follow-up system. This is pretty important, especially, you know, you, I know, you, you know, no matter if you're independent, you definitely need to have your own, you know, payment follow-up system for those where, you know, late payment notices, you're, uh, and if you don't have one and you need help with it, reach out to me because I'd be glad. We, we use one in our office as a wholesaler. Um, and, and we, uh, and when we retailed many years ago, we, that's how we developed it. So, um, and if you're like a farmer's agent, you, you have an independent book, you still have to develop a payment system for that in that independent book. So, and then cross sell, um, you know, make sure that you're promoting other coverages so that you are ensuring that the, um, your business owners know all the coverage that they need. That's the warmest sell that you can make is right, is servicing an account and doing a cross sell. Okay, so um, as I was mentioning, we've got our website. We're, by the way, we've just designed a new website, so it, it, uh, it's going to be even better than our website is now, and a lot of you know, it's uh, it's user friendly. But we're uh, we're ready to help you with uh, painting quotes for your insurance, and um, you can send those in at submissions at CID Insurance Program, and then we've got a, a phone and web quote. Uh, uh, option. You can see it right here on our home page. You just click on one of those. I prefer the phone quote and it's fast way, no application required, and it will tell you this limited amount of information for the classes of business that are eligible. And you can just call up and talk to an underwriter and get a quote in five minutes. The web quote is good too. It has a web chat uh, option. I just find the phone quote is easier because you're actually just talking Face, you know, over the phone to the underwriter, and that you can get all the questions easily answered and get a quote released to you. But you know, small policies where you have a hard time getting an application filled out, there's no app required. So that that's a wonderful way to go. And then on our website under resources, we've got the marketing, we've got marketing tools and templates. So check those out. We've got uh, cover, coverage uh, templates that you can make your own. Uh, and then uh, those are great to send out with renewals, like what if you're trying to make sure that you're selling EPL or proposing EPL or cyber liability uh, or a coverage that they don't have. Uh, and then our proposal templates are in there along with many other types of templates that could be helpful to you. And again, you're watching one of our webinars right now, but we've got a lot of recorded ones on our website. So you can go watch it as, and, and, it, and be, it, it will be just like you are right now watching it. Um, it won't be live, but it's just a recorded version. But they're still super valuable. And then you can see our upcoming webinar. So I want to thank you for your time. I wanted to just point out here is our underwriters. Um, Sienna for professional liability, Teresa is commercial and garage, and um, and Michelle is a commercial and nonprofit, and then uh, Lexi is workers' compensation. They're all great, very responsive, experienced, and they are here to assist you uh, and support you as needed. So um, we look forward to doing business with you. Those that are already doing business with us, we appreciate your business and look forward to doing more. Let us know how we can help you. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.